Have you ever wondered why the ground beneath us sometimes shakes so violently? It's a question that has both fascinated and frightened humanity for centuries. We've all heard of earthquakes, those sudden tremors that can turn the solid earth into a rolling sea. But have you ever paused to ponder what causes these powerful phenomena? It's an intriguing mystery, one that scientists have spent lifetimes attempting to decode. It's also a mystery that carries great importance. Understanding why earthquakes occur can help us predict them, prepare for them, and perhaps one day, even prevent the devastation they often cause. Earthquakes are not just a destructive force to be feared, they are a natural phenomenon to be understood. They are a key to unlocking the secrets of our planet, a fascinating puzzle piece in the grand tapestry of Earth's geology. Today, we are going to unravel the mystery of earthquakes. To understand earthquakes, we first need to comprehend the structure of our planet. Now, think of the Earth as a peach. The surface, where we live, is like the skin of the peach. This is what we call the Earth's crust. It's not a solid shell, but rather it's broken up into a jigsaw puzzle of large pieces known as tectonic plates. Now, beneath this crust, we have the mantle, and beneath that, the core. But for our conversation today, we're going to focus on these tectonic plates that make up the Earth's crust. These plates you see aren't stationary. They're always on the move, albeit at a snail's pace, shifting and sliding around on the semi-fluid mantle below. Imagine a crowded dance floor where everyone's moving to their own rhythm, occasionally bumping into one another. That's what's happening beneath our feet right now. These tectonic plates are moving at a rate of about a few centimeters per year. That's roughly the same speed at which your fingernails grow. So what causes these plates to move? It's all down to the heat from the Earth's core and the mantle. This heat creates convection currents that rise, spread, and sink back down, carrying the plates along for the ride. The boundaries where these plates meet are known as fault lines. And it's along these fault lines that we often see the most seismic activity. When two plates collide, pull apart or rub against each other, it can cause the Earth to shake, creating what we know as an earthquake. The movement of these plates shapes the world as we know it. They're responsible for the creation of mountain ranges, the deep trenches in our oceans, and even the locations of certain natural disasters. So we live on a dynamic, ever-changing planet, and these changes are what lead to earthquakes. So how does the movement of these tectonic plates cause earthquakes? Let's dive into the theory of plate tectonics to answer this question. Our Earth, you see, is like a giant jigsaw puzzle, it's made up of large pieces, or plates, that fit together, but they're not static. They're constantly moving, albeit very, very slowly. We're talking about a pace of a few centimeters per year, similar to the speed at which your fingernails grow. Now you might be wondering what causes these plates to move. The answer lies deep within the Earth, in a layer called the mantle. Here, heat from the Earth's core causes molten rock to rise, move towards the crust, cool down and then sink back towards the core. This process, known as convection, creates currents that push and pull on the tectonic plates, causing them to move. As these plates move, they interact in different ways. They might move apart, move towards each other, or slide past each other. When they move apart, it's usually not a problem. But when they collide or slide past each other, things can get a bit more complicated. You see, the Earth's crust is not smooth. It's full of bumps and irregularities. So when plates try to slide past each other, they can get stuck. But the convection currents in the mantle keep pushing, causing stress to build up in the crust. Now, the Earth's crust can only take so much stress. Eventually, it reaches a breaking point. And when it does, it releases this built-up stress in the form of seismic waves. These waves travel through the Earth's crust and up to the surface, where we feel them as an earthquake. So, in essence, an earthquake is like a giant natural stress relief mechanism. It's the Earth's way of releasing the tension that builds up in its crust due to the constant movement of tectonic plates. Therefore, the shaking we feel during an earthquake is the release of pent-up energy from within the Earth's crust. What happens after these seismic waves are released? Well, the effects of earthquakes are varied and can be quite dramatic. They primarily depend on the magnitude of the earthquake, the proximity to the epicenter, and the local geological conditions. The most immediate and noticeable effect is ground shaking. This is the result of seismic waves radiating outwards from the earthquake's epicenter. The shaking can be gentle and barely noticeable, 
or it can be so violent that it can topple buildings and bridges, rupture gas mains and power lines, and trigger landslides and avalanches. Speaking of landslides, they are another common effect of earthquakes. When the ground shakes, it can destabilize slopes and cliffs causing a rapid downhill movement of a mass of rock, earth, or debris. Landslides are particularly dangerous in hilly or mountainous areas, and can bury entire communities in a matter of moments. And then, there are tsunamis. These massive sea waves are triggered by undersea earthquakes. When an earthquake occurs beneath the ocean's surface, it displaces a large volume of water, creating waves that can travel across entire ocean basins. Upon reaching shallow waters near the coast, these waves increase in height, often causing catastrophic flooding and destruction. The severity of these effects is directly related to the magnitude of the earthquake. A small tremor may not be felt at all, while a powerful quake can cause devastation on a massive scale. However, it's important to remember that the local geological conditions also play a significant role. For instance, buildings constructed on soft or filled ground are more likely to suffer damage than those built on solid rock. In the end, earthquakes are a natural part of Earth's dynamic nature. They are the planet's way of releasing the immense pressure built up by the movement of tectonic plates. And while we can't prevent earthquakes, we can definitely prepare for them, reducing their potential for destruction. So, while earthquakes can be destructive, they are a natural result of our planet's dynamic nature. So, why do earthquakes occur? Well, it's as if our planet is playing a never-ending game of tug-of-war. Deep beneath the surface, the Earth's crust is divided into several large and small pieces, known as tectonic plates. These plates are constantly on the move, albeit at a snail's pace. Over time, stress builds up at the edges where these plates meet. It's like a tightly coiled spring, waiting to release its energy. And then, without warning, it happens. The stress becomes too much. The plates slide past each other and the energy is released in the form of seismic waves. These waves ripple through the Earth, shaking and quaking everything in their path. And thus, an earthquake occurs. It's a complex and powerful process, one that reveals the dynamic and ever-changing nature of our planet. Next time the Earth shakes, remember? It's just our planet adjusting its jigsaw puzzle of tectonic plates. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share our channel for more intriguing insights into our world.